Let's take a look at an economics problem that involves integrals. I'll pause while you read this. Here's the definition of marginal revenue. It's my definition anyway, it's not a very formal one. And I'll give you an example. If we take the marginal revenue formula for this particular problem, let's plug in a couple of numbers just to get a sense for what this means. If you plug 20 into this, you get a result of $7.36 per item. That means once you're at the sales level of 20 items, your revenue is changing at $7.36 per item sold. One way you can kind of think of this is the price that you would get for the 21st item that you sold, in the sense that if your revenue is changing at $7.36 per item, at the 20 item sales level, that would mean that the 21st item you sold, you would get that much for it. Another example, if we plug 30 in, we get a different number here, $6.69 per item. That means that once we've reached the sales level of 30, our revenue is changing at a rate of $6.69 per item. You can think of that as the sales cost of perhaps the 31st item, just to give you a sense of what that means. But in a calculus class, you can often do the problems without even knowing what marginal revenue means, as long as you know that marginal revenue is the derivative of revenue. So whatever formula they give you for marginal revenue, that's R prime. The question is asking us to find the revenue function. So in essence, we're being given R prime and being asked to find R. Of course, the way we can do that is by integrating. This brings up an interesting integral though, because it's a product. Notice that it's X times the exponential function. And there's a couple of ways you can integrate a product. Sometimes a substitution works. You may have seen problems like this before where you did a U substitution, perhaps U equals negative 0.05X, for example. But if you were to try that, you'd realize it wouldn't get you anywhere in this case. And substitution isn't always the best strategy. Another strategy for dealing with products is called integration by parts. And that, as it turns out, as you'll see, is going to be productive here. So as usual, I'm going to let u be one of the factors of the integ integrand and dv be the other factor. I then differentiate my u and integrate my dv, and that gives me the, the function v itself. Notice I simplified the fraction. I thought it was looked pretty trashy having decimals inside fractions, so that was bothering me, so I cleaned it up a bit. You'll recall that this is the integration by parts formula, and I can now plug in all the information I have. This would be a great time to hit pause and analyze each particular. And from here, just a reminder, Integration by parts doesn't do the integral for us. It just turns the integral we're doing into a new integral. But we always hope that that new integral will be simpler, and that will turn out to be the case. And that's how we know when integration by parts actually is productive. I'll do a little algebra cleanup here. By factoring out the negative 20, and then I will integrate the exponential. And you know how we normally write plus C for our integrals? I just decided to write plus B. Not that it really matters, does it? But I chose a different letter for the following reason. When I distribute the 20 outside the parentheses, I would get 20 times B. 20 times B is just some other constant, which I'll call C. This would be a good, another good time to hit pause and make sure you understand all the little micro details. So this is our revenue function, but we don't know what C is yet. Quite often when we do integrals, we just leave plus C in the answer. But this is a revenue function for a real product that's supposed to be able to make predictions about 
what our revenue will be based on sales. So we can't very well have a plus C in the answer. If you look at the top of the screen, you'll see where it says, it's safe to assume that the revenue for selling zero items is zero dollars. That's fair to assume, right? You don't sell anything, you don't get anything. So I can exploit that fact here by plugging in zero for X, the number of items sold, and setting that equal to zero as my revenue. Now, as messy as this equation is, it simplifies down and we can quickly see that C is 400. Another good pause moment if, you're, if you wanna process all that. And now that we know C is 400, we have our revenue function and that's what they asked us for. And that is essentially the answer to this problem. Now from a pure student in a class moment, you're done, that's the answer. But I think it might be valuable for us to go a little bit beyond the answer just to understand the difference between revenue and marginal revenue. Both have the word revenue in them, but they're actually quite different. Let's, let's look at a couple examples here beyond the problem. If I were to plug 20 into this function, which I did on a calculator, I got about $105. That means that I can expect to get a revenue or a money taken in of $105 or $106 if I sell 20 items. But the notion here behind these calculus-based economic problems is that not every item you sell is for the same amount. And so, I can't assume that I could just divide that number by 20 and know that the amount per item, that's not how these problems necessarily work. Another example, when I plugged 30 in, I got about $177. And that means that if I am going to sell 30 items, I can expect that to be my revenue. Well, how is that related to the marginal revenue or R prime? You'll remember earlier in this problem, we plugged in 20 and 30 and got seeming much different numbers than we did. These are not the revenues at the sales level of 20 and 30. These are the rates at which the revenue is changing at those levels. So in summary, revenue is the amount of money you'll make and marginal revenue is the rate per item at which your revenue is changing at any given sales level.